Well, hello and welcome to the Shadow Proclamation. My name is Paul, and as always, I'm joined by Thomas. Hello. <laughs> and we are watching episode five of The Mind Robber from Thomas's kitchen, where his housemates are there. He's trying to pretend he's not there, trying to look like a normal person, not someone who watches Doctor Who on the internet. <laughs> Because they're not like us. They're the not we. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> oh, I remember this. But... The man getting stuck in a book. I remember this. Yeah. Jamie and Zoe. That was a different shot, though. You have no authority here, Jackie Wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank goodness. The TARDIS broke up. Yes, you said that, Jamie. Repetition is a form of comedy. <laughs> Paul asked me what the key. <laughs> 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 it hasn't yet been confirmed, has it, if this is the master that we come to know from later in Doctor Who? Uh, well, I mean, I know. But if you were in my shoes. If I were in your shoes, what would you be thinking? Oh, cool, it's bringing together all the characters from earlier on. Yeah, yeah. Do you think about it? That would be agony, wouldn't it? it would, yeah, it'd be absolutely horrific. If it was so long she, she was to place it through a series of pulleys, it would ease the pressure. <laughs> Isn't this episode, did we say, like, this is the shortest episode of Doctor Who ever, this one? Oh, yeah. 18 minutes, doesn't it? Suddenly, the, the carcass came to their rescue. <laughs> Oh, yes. But the carcass realized his mistake and turned back to face his real enemies. Oh, this is cool. The battle of the storytellers. Who gets to tell the story, Paul? Yeah. Oh, this is a proper score, isn't it? Yeah. Very lush orchestral Quite arrangement. A Quite a change all of a sudden. <laughs> the classic press every button. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Nice little reversal of the shot. Oh, that was snappy, wasn't it? Yeah, there you go. That was the last one, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of ends on a cliffhanger. Yeah, I don't remember that being um, the way it ended. I don't remember how it ended, you know, like I say, because it's one I, I remember from a kid. But I, I didn't remember how that, where it led. I thought it was a proper conclusion to it, so, uh, yeah. I mean, it is a... Oh, Johnny Greenwood. <laughs> no, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I mean, it is a masterful story, isn't it? And I think it was a satisfying conclusion. I like the way it brought together all the characters and, like, the, the war of the storytellers, I think, was my highlight. And the doctor saying... And at that moment, the carcass turns up and saves them. And the yeah. master's like, no, the ray guns emerge. And it was just brilliant. It was like a writer's room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's a really neat little idea to do that, isn't it? And I guess, yeah, you could do a lot more with it if you weren't constricted as well by the idea of not being able to write yourself into it and you become yeah. fiction. But that's a neat little idea, isn't it? This idea that if he... If he brings himself into it, he becomes fictional. Um, yeah. And it's cool to see something from the 60s doing that because I've seen, like, this is almost being overdone today, this sort of ultra meta kind of thing. Like, mm -hmm. there's a Rick and Morty episode that basically does this kind of thing. There's a storyteller and... Um, there's a, what's clever about that is there's one function where you can change who the main character is in the episode. And so right. they just set this random security guard as the main character. And then the camera just follows him going about his business for <laughs> a few minutes. Um, but it's cool to see something from, yeah, this sort of quite early days of television comparatively, mm. um, doing something so ambitious and experimental, really. It's kind of like an art house what is it what even yeah. is it <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> yeah i guess i hadn't really thought about it being sort of ahead of its time in some ways it reminds me a little bit as well if you get that scene in um you see monty python and the holy grail where they're the animated scene where they're being chased by the monster and then it's like then suddenly 
the animator suffered a fatal heart attack, you know, and <laughs> cuts to the animator and he falls back off his chair and then of course the monster disappears and stuff. Yes. Uh, it just reminds me a little bit of that kind of that kind of thing. Um <laughs> Yeah, that's very good. Yeah. But yeah, I really love that. I mean it takes me back to uh you like I said it was the first Trouton story I saw. Um and I think it's so different, isn't it, to any of the Troutons we've seen before, even most of the Hartnells as well. Even we, we said before the Hartnell era was much more varied than the Troutons stuff we've seen. Because yeah. Troutons certainly in his second season got stuck into a kind of base under siege. Um, <laughs> right. Bless you. Sorry. Um, and then, of course, after the Dominators, it couldn't feel much more different, could it? Um, so really, a really good, fresh feeling story. Um, yeah, um, and interesting to end on a cliffhanger because we don't always get that, do we? There, there was, some, there was a, a definitely a spate of stories at the beginning of the Hartnell era where stories ran very much into each other, didn't they? Mm. Um, I guess that could, I don't know how much that continued for. There were, there were times when it did and when it didn't. Often you'd have some closure with they get into the TARDIS and ah, yeah. done. Here, they got into the TARDIS, but it was still very... We didn't get any respite at the end. We just saw the TARDIS reassemble. We are like, oh, actually, are they in there? Uh, is it all well yet? And the Master's yeah. with them, so is he a good guy? Or is he the Master? Still hasn't, yeah. still hasn't confirmed. I'm, I'm, I'm going to call it. I, th I think he might be. Or at least... I think it's notable that he's called the master and therefore if the show then invents right. a recurring character called the master later on perhaps it was harking back to that so it, i think it's somehow connected whether this guy is actually the doctor's arch nemesis like the first time we see him right i don't know but um it'll be interesting to find out well we shall see i suppose we shall see uh well mum's the word <laughs> Cool. Well, um, there we go. Uh, that ends the mind robber. Let us know what you thought of that down in the comments. Give the channel a subscribe if you haven't already. And do join us on our Discord community, our Discord server, by clicking on the link in the description of the video where we can have more chat about all things Doctor Who. Uh, apart from that, otherwise, uh, goodbye. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hello again. <laughs> Hello again. I thought it wasn't going to this get in This was huge there. during oh, COVID, God. wasn't it? This oh, it's amazing. Time to start. Oh, I think we could start in a moment. <laughs> um, I think it's perhaps helpful just to go through the same things as we went through before, which is just to encourage people to switch off their microphones. Um, because it does reduce the background. Can we be assured that we won't be thrown out of the meeting like we were last time? Um, I, as long as we have reasonable behaviour from everyone, no one would be excluded from the meeting. I, I was I was thrown out of the meeting. Uh, so was Councillor Birdhill. So was Councillor. <laughs> this guy, Joseph. Oh, please let the chair. This is Weaver, please. If you disrupt this meeting, I will have to remove you from it. You can't. It's only the chairman who can remove people from a meeting. <laughs> You have no authority here, Jackie Weaver. No authority at all. <laughs> she's just kicked him out. No, she's kicked him out. Don't, don't. She's kicked him out. Don't. This is a meeting called by two councillors. Illegally. And they now elect a chairman. No, they can't because the vice chair's here. I take charge. <laughs> Read the standing orders. Read them and understand them. <laughs> Where's the chairman? Orders. Where's the chairman gone? <laughs> like to elect a chairman for this meeting. You don't have to elect a chairman. There's a chairman already installed. <laughs> the chairman of the council. Councillor Burkle, we've been through this. You don't, what are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about. Could I ask you to be to be <laughs> respectful to Jackie Weaver, Sorry. please? <laughs> <laughs> this Jackie Weaver. I find I that uh, the person on Alad Brewerton's uh, Zoom is being very disrespectful to everybody. Oh, coming from you, from Birkenhead, that sounds good. <laughs> wow. Thank God for that. <laughs>
can I propose John Smith, please? Yeah. I'll second it. Thank you. Okay. My, my, my first point is to apologise to Jackie, but welcome to Handforth. Indeed, Sorry. it's nothing if not lively in Handforth. Yes, but I, what I would say is that it, it was um, a very good example of bullying within Cheshire East and, and the environs. Um, the chairman simply declared himself um, Clark um, and notified everybody of the case um, and the um, remaining members, um, quite correctly, um, have, you, have refused to recognise that, um, that position. But as um, Councillor Smith says, I'm afraid there's no way of stopping him calling himself Clark. Okay. Please refer to me as Britney Spears from now on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's great, isn't she? Man, it's brilliant.